uh, and welcome uh, everyone to this morning's webinar on hospitality uh, apprenticeships and how they can help you attract, develop and retain great talent. So I'm Stephen Alton, I'm the Chief Executive Officer of the British Institute of Innkeeping, so uh, a huge welcome from myself and my team today. Uh, we're incredibly pleased to be here with our partners from the BIAB uh, and our colleagues from the Skills and Education Group, uh, led by Paul Eels, who will be talking to you very shortly as the Chief Exec of that organisation. And equally a huge welcome to Mark Holden, who's given up his valuable time as he's reopening his uh, increasingly very busy sites down in the southwest to share his experience around um, apprenticeships and basically how, how we get uh, great talent into our fantastic pubs and which we, I think we recognise is a, a challenge ahead. So just to set the scene, um, obviously it's, re it's really encouraging that a lot of our members are able to start to reopen their businesses. Um, not all, but obviously over the next few weeks, hopefully see more and more of those, particularly with the indoor opening and our expectation that we're going to be free of restrictions from that 21st of June date. Um, but it does start to bring additional pressures on our businesses. Now, members have been very clear feeding back their concerns and questions as we've gone through the last 12 months. And increasingly now it's turning to staff and it's, and it's turning to how are they going to make sure they've got the, you know, the right teams in place as their venues return to full trading and very much hopeful of the, of the, uh, the, the great goodwill that's been built up around our pubs and the fantastic work they've done over the last 12 months as they could open. Um, and we've already seen that in the early signs of, of that sentiment coming back to the pub that's obviously been solely missed by so many across the UK. So we know we're going to be busy again. Uh, we had some very clear challenges before we went into this with key skills uh, and making sure that we were saying the right things to all those uh, individuals that could come to our sector to join great teams, great jobs, fantastic careers and huge development opportunities under apprenticeships, qualifications and the other skills that, that we provide, uh, I think so uniquely in this sector. But we have a, a real challenge with that. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to the conversation between Mark and Paul uh, to illustrate the, the challenges of which I think we've got a few, but also some of the opportunities for moving us on. Um, so the BII team have worked incredibly hard over the last 12 months to support our members in, in all things that have mattered to them uh, as they've opened and closed and reopened their businesses again. Um, and that's included simplification of key information, making sure they've got things in their hand that they can, they can action uh, because there's been a lot of complexity. And I think we're into a similar field now with apprenticeships, kickstart, recruitment, development opportunities. So today was an opportunity to, to bring some of that BII approach to this critical topic, to review that, that very clear direction of the opportunities that you could take advantage of. Um, insight from our members has been critical through the last 12 months. We've asked of, of you and of them uh, on several occasions, and that information has has allowed us to take a very clear voice into government. And, and for my pleasure, I've been speaking to government week in, week out with members of the team to make sure they're in no doubt about the challenges that your businesses have been through and equally, you know, what is needed to support their, their recovery as we move forward. So uh, we continue to do that. And I think on definitely on this topic of, of jobs, talent management, skills development, et cetera, there's still a lot more work to be done. And there's more support that we need to get, gain from, from government because behind all this, we're a fantastic sector. We were growing before it. We support huge amounts of employment directly in the pub sector and wider hospitality. And it's only through that job creation that we're going to get through this and recover the economy. So we're a key sector and deservedly need to be given that time with government. So we'll continue to push for that. Uh, equally, we're here to recognise fantastic work that's, that our members have been doing. So if it's via our Heart of the Community Awards, doing all the amazing things they've done, both when they've been open and closed, keeping connected to their communities and national innovation and training awards. And I know Mark Holden, you've, you've, uh, you've secured one of those awards yourself in the past, recognizing the fantastic work that you and your team do and your commitment to people development and really looking after your team. So I'm sure you'll be referencing that as we go forward. So basically we, you know, we're very pleased that we've been able to support as we have so far. There's a challenge ahead. We're well aware that this recovery is gonna take a number of years uh, to rebuild these fantastic businesses. Uh, and as ever, the feedback is it's great teams that are going to make the difference to, to give that fantastic hospitality experience that, that we know matters so much. So that's the brief kind of intro today. Uh, there's going to be lots of time for kind of, I think, Q&A at the back end of the session, Paul, led by yourself. But 
really want to get into the hands of the experts now on, on how do we um, help you all unlock, unlock the opportunity around getting great people into your businesses. So, Paul, can I hand to you at this point? You certainly can, Steve. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's really good to be with you. Uh, delighted that uh, we've developed the Skills and Education Group, this strategic partnership with BII um, that hopefully will come to a real fruition for members. Uh, BIIAB is an awarding body for the sector and of the sector. I'm I, my background, um, I was brought up in hospitality. Uh, I'm a fellow of the BII, a proud fellow of the BII, uh, and I am delighted that BIIAB has become part of the Skills and Education Group, but with a strong strategic partnership um, with the BII to support its members and the needs that it has. So today's session is our first public outing together um, in terms of to be able to talk about apprenticeships, how we might support your, your businesses, as Steve says, as you begin to trade uh, following this pandemic. Um, the session is really a conversation between me and Mark Holden. Mark Holden is director of In Cornwall, uh, three pubs in the southwest, um, who has been a, an advocate of apprenticeships over the last uh, a, a good number of years and really this is hopefully is a session about how apprenticeships are can benefit the business some of the challenges that might come along the way but equally how engaged and how beneficial it has been to mark and his organization we've got some slides to share at the end around um, some of the incentives that are available uh, that you can pick up to support you and our relationship management team which is headed by Kay Jackson who's on the line today will also be able to signpost you post this meeting and we've got one of um, BIIAB's experts EQA, our lead EQA Neil Farker on the line to participate in a Q&A session later on today uh, during the session. If you want to ask a question, please raise your hand. I've got team around that are uh, keeping their eyes out for people with their hands up. Um, if you don't want to put your hand up, or you want to type in, please type in the chat and we'll pick up the questions through the chat as well. If the things that are going on through the session that Mark and I have together and there's some points that you want to raise please raise them and we'll pick them up at the end uh, of the session too so uh, Mark um, good morning to you thank you for taking the time to to be with us this morning would you just outline a little bit about your organization and the apprenticeships uh, why you got involved in the apprenticeship journey in the beginning that, and how it's helped your business a little bit okay um Welcome, good morning everybody. My name's Mark Holden. I'm company director um, of In Cornwall Limited, based down in sunny Cornwall. Um, we've got three St. Osterbury tenanted sites. They're called the Victorian in Three Milestone, uh, the Norway Inn and uh, the Victorian in Roach. Um, I think, take you, take you right back to the start um, around kind of apprenticeships and training and the, the industry. So I started out in the industry when um, I was a young, young lad holding down multiple jobs 14, 15 years old, pot washing inside of the kitchen. I was 15 years old. I had wearing a dicky bow and running around the nightclub as a as a glass collector. And um, I will always remember a um, difficult conversation that I have with my grandmother, um, which was around going to university or uh, sticking with it and uh, creating a career path in hospitality. I was very lucky to have a fantastic boss um, at that time called Tim, who um, was based out in Cornwall and had uh, multiple sites and always allowed me the opportunity to do whatever training that I wanted. Um, so, you know, boxing off all of the BIAB um, certificates, the, you know, the licensing to security, you know, and um, that for me was was just amazing having somebody who just backed you and, and gave you the encouragement and the investment to go and um, develop. Um, so um, my company started 10 years ago. Um, so that employment came, came to an end through um, redundancy um, and myself and Justin, uh, my business partner who worked uh, together for uh, 15, 15 to 18 years decided, you know, we might as well just go and give it a go. 
uh, and see what we can do for ourselves. So we picked up our first tenancy um, 10 years ago, a um, little bit different to kind of like sports bar and the nightclubs environments and, and bits. And, um, you know, it was, uh, it was a challenge of learning um, how we go. And, and I just wanted to be the kind of boss that I previously had of allowing people that opportunity and that training and that um, development. Um, so we, um, you know, initially started using apprenticeships, I think it was about nine, nine years ago, of just a way of getting people more engaged into the business to try to assist with uh, retention um, and also painting the picture of what a fantastic, quick career path that you could get within hospitality um, and the diversity of it as well so you know we use apprenticeships for front of house and for kitchen for manager uh, management for leadership um you know i'm even now looking at uh probably marketing and design apprenticeships um yeah so that's that's how we started brilliant you've just picked up on retention mark has the apprenticeship program how many apprentices have you had and has it been useful for retention because obviously ret staff retention in the pub trade is, is is not always where we would want it to be i think there's two conversations there for apprenticeships okay. um i think there is uh, apprenticeships for recruitment and apprenticeships for retention and development okay. um and i try to keep those two quite separate um and the if I'm honest, the majority of the apprenticeships that we've had and um, or the apprentice, our team members that have been on apprenticeship are our existing team members. Um, and it's trying to provide them with the in, with the right information and the right knowledge of, of what can be achievable, what they can learn, what they can develop in, what they can get their teeth into um, for you know the next 12 months and the, on the, and the next 18 months. So it kind of goes hand in hand and, of that um, develop personal development plan. Um, and then on the other side of it, there's the, the um, recruiting side, so bringing young people into um, the uh, hospitality trade and into the business and showing them um, what can be achieved. Um, you know, we've done it. You know, I've done it myself, you know, right, right the way through. Just start making that decision not to go to university and to back yourself and back your own skills and back your own talent and dedication. Okay, and, and how has that approach benefited your business? It's, it's, it's huge. You know, I, I will never stop promoting and providing or, or putting apprenticeships in front of people. Um, I just think it's a great way to provide focus. It's a great way of getting lots of output for the business. Um, it's a great way for yourself to actually you know, step out of the business and work on your business without probably actually realizing that you're doing it because you're working alongside by side by side somebody else. Mm -hmm. um, I think that the key for me, I'll tell you one, one of the best success stories that we've had is uh, one of our uh, sous chefs at the moment. So a um, lad called Darren, um, he was 15 years old um, and he came to us from his work experience, um, you know, really young, you know, and, and he just loved being in that environment. And I sat down with him afterwards and kind of said, you know, what are your plans? What are you, what are you planning on doing? And, and it was that conversation around, well, I'll probably go, go to college and not sure what I'm going to study, you know, really in, into um, photography. And I chatted to him about apprenticeships and he wasn't sure and I was like look you know best thing to do let's just sit down with your parents let's have a meeting and let's you know, bring them in and, and we'll just dive into it a little bit deeper and and see what that means for you um, and um, they can ask any questions that they like so they came along to this meeting and you know and I pointed that out and the first initial reaction that I get when I talk about apprenticeships is cheap labour and that really annoys me. It gets my. It doesn't. It doesn't necessarily have to be. Why? Why? Do, why does it have to be? And then, as soon as you get rid of that stigma and get rid of that hurdle, then you're able to have some really good conversations with people about their personal development and about their careers. So, 
hence with you know Darren he he um, decided um, agreed with his parents came on board uh, went through his level two um, apprenticeship then upskilled and then did his level three apprenticeship you know all of that probably took about three years he's done lots of um, leadership uh, training alongside of that lots of mentor um, and he's now 22 years old uh, in a middle management role has grown and developed as a fantastic leader and he's on the verge of, of, of putting a deposit down for his first house and you know that that story I I love telling because that sums up apprenticeships to me you know that you can if you've got somebody if you get the relationship right, you get the right person with the right employer, um, you can achieve fantastic things together. And he's been he's been a great added value to to the business. Knows the the company, knows the business, knows the financials inside inside and out. Um, and then, so what we then try to do is when um, people get in, into that level, then we try to bring um, additional lower level apprenticeships underneath them as well. Um, so at the moment, I've got a new scheme that we're looking to put together where I've got level fours, level threes and level three, uh, level twos all coming in in front of house. So they're all mentoring each other um, and providing each other projects and, and assessing and, and that. That works really well because you've got people inside of the business that have been there and that have done it and have gone through that process, encouraging those lower levels and pushing them and pushing them through. It sounds to me because quite often you find with some with some employers, they phone up their training provider, ask them to find an apprentice, and they work. You do the interviews, they start the job, but the training is quite separate from the training provider. And the employer it sounds to me like your success is is quite linked to your involvement in and your integration of that apprentice into the business it's not anything though isn't it you get you get more out of what you put in yourself isn't it you know i, I the the it is fantastic having having uh, a, a good training provider behind you you know and we we've got a great one true and penworth college that are that down the road from ours are amazing at what they do you know they've got such passion for um for hospitality um and they provide added value to our business and i would say that they're an integral part of our our business and the development and the growth of our team members and our and, and our company as a whole um, okay well as our, our our company's grown by our people and when we we try to encourage that that movement up the ranks and and, and push people through um through our, our company um and if it wasn't for you know talent within our business we wouldn't have expanded probably um so and the and the college and, and the college all the, the educational providers play an absolute key role of that um you know we with apprenticeships you, there was something called a 20 percent um off the job um training that um that people have to do um that can be either in college or you can also do bits and pieces yourself so um some of the uh, we've got a great relationship with all of our suppliers and we try to encourage our apprentices to spend days um out of the business and go and experience whether that's in a, a fruit picking inside of a field or a day down at the butchery i've even had some of our chefs down at a menu making factory in a little hut and you know they're, they're able to use all of the bindings and the covers of which the majority of all the covers are, are made up of wallpaper never knew that um <laughs> i went down with them and and you know you can just see all the pieces of the jigsaw just you know clicking and just coming together um when you experience things that are outside of your business as well okay and in, in terms of so there's you're working with a provider apprenticeships have changed recently in england if you're outside of england it's not quite the same but there's um now apprenticeship standards so you're working with true and prem with and the BIIAB in terms of endpoint assessment. Can you talk us through a little bit about how that works and how that relationship uh, and how apprenticeships have changed over the last few years? Yeah, so for, for me, it's, a, it's also a learning curve. And the more that you end up, um, the more that you end up going through the process yourself, the, the, the better you get at it, the more confident you get at it, and the more that you end up benefit, benefiting your apprentices as well. Um, so at this moment in time, our um, uh, educational provider, so 
if we were looking at the chef's uh, uh, apprenticeship at the moment, so it's commie chef uh, level two or the CDP level three, um, we would have the apprentices spending one day a week in college and then they would spend four days in inside of the business. Um, we pay them for that day that's inside of the college. Um, then mm -hmm. um, the uh, team members then uh, create their a portfolio um, so they've got criteria that they end up going through and they just evidence stuff that they do on a daily basis whether it's, or a weekly basis. Um, they create a little timeline of what they're doing and how they're doing it. Um, and the uh, educational provider ends up getting them prepared for what's called your endpoint assessment, um, which is where then everything kind of holds the, the provider then kind of steps back and everything hands over to the BIIB and they go through an assessment process um, so I think the, the different, the EPAs are slightly different depending on what um, qualification that you end up doing. So you have some that will have a project on the business. So um, we would sit with our apprentice in front of the BIAB um, assessor and the apprentice would present the project that's to do with the business. So that might be, um, I'm going to create a, I'm going to increase um, spend per head by introducing a new premium drinks menu or I'm going to put on an event um, for um, a local company that's outdoors with music and, and, and catering or um, I'm going to increase productivity by a certain level. Um, so once that project has been agreed by myself and by the EPA assessment then it kind of starts a uh, uh, the start gun goes off. So then the apprentice has a period of time to complete that project. Um, uh, then that project then gets submitted. So that's one part of uh, an endpoint assessment. Um, then some of the some of them have a exam. So I think it's like multi, either multi question, uh, a a question. Uh, what they call them. Uh, sorry, me uh, me words are going. Um, you've got a uh, an exam that happens, uh, and then you can do an observation on yeah. top of that. So you'd have an assessor that comes down and comes into your business. Um, not really, they don't engage that much. It's quite interesting. So the assessor will just sit in the background and just monitor how the apprentice works. Um, look at things like either customer service or their health and safety inside of the kitchen. And that usually can last two to four two to four hours um and then at the end of it is probably the most proudest part um something called a professional discussion and you have you sit down with your um apprentice over you know zoom or whether that's you know uh, whether that's in, in front of your um assessor itself and you talk about that whole journey of what they've been up to over that last 12 to 18 months and that for me is incredible and, and, and a very proud moment as an employer to sit and hear the growth and development and the journey of that young person and all the things that they've done and all the things that they've achieved. And, and you look back and you think, you know, lots of it, you know, you might, you might not think that you've done at that time because, you know, some, some of these apprentices could end up lasting about 18 months. Um, and, and then it's, you know, wow, you know, and then they, wait for the result to come in, the result comes in, and hopefully then you have that conversation of, right, what's next? Come on, upskill, next level, let's go again. Um, okay. yeah. It sounds to me like the endpoint assessment, the changes, because that's a, quite a significant change to the apprenticeship. That sounds like there's some real added value to you as a business for the project and, and yeah. the review. Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, you, you've got to have input, you know, all, all, all the way through. Um, you've got to be quite open about your business, willing to share information, willing to, you know, willing to guide them along the way, um, you know, and, and look what you want to get out of it as well. You know, there might be areas inside of the business that, that you haven't got time for. You know, we are incredibly busy people trying to juggle so much all of the time, um, you know, with, that's with accounting, bookkeeping, marketing, strategies, costings, recruitment, HR, um, and I'm even now trying to kind of expand my thought process around apprenticeships and look at things like you know, digital market, marketing apprenticeships and, and, you know, different things like that to try and relieve 
the pressure from myself and to provide me more time to spend with with our team members and develop them further. I was going to say the question. Um, there's a question from um, Steve in a minute, but and I'll, I'll ask that of you. Um, but equally, if, can are you ever too busy to do apprenticeships? Is is my question, or is is it actually a business imperative from your perspective? It's it's, it's, it's investment. You know, that's every apprentice that I take on, I treat that as a long term investment. You know, you, you, there is absolutely no point in taking somebody on that you just think that you're just going to use for the next 12 months. There has to be a long-term plan, a long-term picture with it. And I think that's where you get the most out of it. Where do you want that person to be? What skills and what, what jobs do you want them to be able to be competent to, to do after three months, six months, 12 months, 18 months? Okay, I mean that's a bit like no, that. Sounds like good employee development approach to good good employee development and uh, and, and management. But it, you know, it's not it's not the only thing that we do. You know, there's there's loads loads of tools that we use that we throw into the mix. But you know, a, apprenticeships are really important. You know, and and particularly when recruitment gets really tough. Um, you know, it's a great way of bringing people in that lower level to try to bring more young people into the, into the hospitality trade. Um, and we encourage all of our managers to to get involved with with um, some of the local schools as well. You know, so it's it's that's a great way in. You know, get in contact with your local career advisors. Let them know what you've got going on. Talk to them about your business and the opportunities that inside. Let's let's promote and all collectively sell how brilliant the career paths and the opportunities that hospitality can bring to people. You know? Cause but if we, if, if we don't, they won't, they won't know about us. You know? And you'd be quite, you'd be quite surprised at the, uh, at the interest that you'll end up getting from that. You know, we've taken the likes of you know, Darren and some of our apprentices to like career shows and, and talk right. to young people about their career path and got them chatting about um, how it's benefited them and, and the, the, you know, the challenges that they face, but also the opportunities. We, we talked briefly yesterday about the short, uh, when you and I were having a conversation about the, the shortage of, uh, of chefs um, uh, and staff effectively trying to uh, apply for jobs in the Southwest. I'm sure um, with um, Brexit and with all sorts of other issues across the country, yours is not just a story of the Southwest, it's a story of across all BII members. And I just wondered how, is the apprenticeship programme proving a real incentive to drive people to your organisation in terms of for careers and for jobs? It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a part of it. You know, definitely. You know, it, it's not a short term fix whatsoever, but, you know, it is a long term opportunity um, to try to bring people in and, and to have somebody in that's in your business for a long period of time. Um, we, we've used apprenticeships for retention wise and development of our managers. Because like the level four in um, the level threes in in supervising, creating kind of team leaders, and the level fours in in hospitality management and hospitality leadership. Now all all of that is to try to get um, our team members in like engaged for for a long period of time in in the business. And in terms of just before we, I'll move on in a minute. But I said I'd, I'd talk about the. Uh, I'll ask Steve's question. Uh, and the Steve's question is, Mark, what impact have the apprenticeship projects had on your business? Oh, you know, they, they, they all have, they all have fantastic inputs. You know, each, each project, whether that's, whether that's a, um, whether that's a, an event that's put on. So I can remember one where um, there was two of the apprentices put on a garden party for a local industrial estate and, and promoted it and put flyers on, put music on, um, put up a stage, an outside bar, a gym menu, um, and and the turnover, the, the turnover increased by seventy five percent for that day. You know, so just little things um, like that. You know the. Um, the recent one, um, uh, a level level two apprenticeship was looking at the um, service levels of coming out of COVID and what we'd need and, and increasing, uh, creating a, 
uh, drinks menu, putting premium items on, um, spend per head's increased, um, the uh, sales mix is, is altered, so it's got more wet heavy than, uh, than food heavy, so all of that has a, has a contri contribution to it. Brilliant. No, that's uh, great. Well, the projects, the projects benefit. You know, you've got to have a little bit of an input into the into the mm. project as well, because there's there's no point in in putting that time into it that you're not going to get anything out of. And and you've no. got to agree it. You know what? So if you've got somebody that's that's having to spend eight weeks, twelve weeks, or something doing a project, well, it might be on something that you're going to benefit long term for. Absolutely. That's great. Bobby uh, Bax has got a question. What happens if you wrong? Uh, and this is about actually recruitment and selection and putting people onto the program. Mm -hmm. um, his question is, what happens if you choose the wrong person? And for example, they don't put the required effort in. Um, how do you expect to recover your investment? What if they lose sooner, leave sooner than, than expected? Um, it, you know, it, it's great when you get the first, when you get some coming through and do a really great job but finding the right people is always challenging yeah 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 definitely um and you know they are it's 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 tough you know friendship is is hard work you know definitely and i think it's no different you've got to treat apprenticeship and recruitment it's no different to taking on any anybody else um you know there is there is risk you know of course there is but what we try to do is take somebody on first and get them embedded into the business first you know probably about three months early something like that um and then you you'll get a pretty good idea of whether they're going to be able to 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 withstand them they're going to last follow your gut it's all it's all we do the majority of the time isn't it you know you, you can you can get a really good gauge from somebody within within that three 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 months um very rare do we kind of take somebody on right right from the off um and you also work with your provider as well you know because because they're going to have a really good insight you know some stuff that you will see maybe at college that that, that you won't see see in in-house and and that's got to be a 360 communication um and and how that they're doing you know treat your treat your provider as as an invested interest in your business okay Brilliant. are you using any of the government initiatives like kickstart to as part of that pipeline as part of that process to the induction bit the, the three months that you described obviously the the that's a little bit longer the kickstart but are you using that scheme or considering yeah. it yeah yeah so we uh we got seven uh now eight uh kickstart uh roles that we are recruiting for um with the pivot of the business that's that's given us you know a new new roles to bring in so people you know looking after the mornings trying to increase um kind of the breakfast out in the gardens um bits and pieces so we we are looking for um two uh, uh two kickstarters in each business one front of house and one for kitchen um we started that in uh november we've just uh started we've just taken on two kickstarters and we're still recruiting for the others at this moment in time um there is great opportunity on there with a humongous amount of reduced risk with um the funding that's coming from the government um i will be you know if the kickstarters um last which i think that the ones that we recruited you know will um they we i will be offering them an apprenticeship so i think it's a, i think the the kickstart and the apprenticeship schemes can work brilliantly hand in hand um but it's like anything, you know, you're only as good as your own recruitment, aren't you? You know, and, and what you've got to do is find the right person that's going to fit you, that's going to fit your business, that's going to fit the training provider and build on that relationship. Um, you know, you've got to have the confidence that, that, that they're going to last, you know, I would say 18 months. You know, I, I don't think I've ever had an apprenticeship that's completely within 12 months um okay. and 18 months is, is a good period of time for a development okay brilliant the, we've got quite a few questions coming in so we'll, yeah. we'll clear some of these 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 off um kate uh, says you describe apprenticeships as being an investment can you quantify your what return 
your business receives, e.g. cost savings associated with creating a recruit, uh, recruitment pipeline, allowing for ex uh, expansion uh, into new business areas to benefit motivations of the workforce. Have you got any clear return on investment? For it's difficult, it's difficult, difficult to put into, in, into figures, but you know, things like the, there is a cost to recruitment. We, you know, whenever we've got, we've got an apprenticeship um, vacancy, we also try to recruit um, ourselves as well as allowing the, um, the provider to also um, go out and find um, young people. We pay over what the, the national um, living wage, the, sorry, the national uh, apprenticeship wage each would be. Um, there is investment because you have to pay for them while they're at college. Okay, so you've really got to have a little bit of a think about that. Um, you know, look at your um, look at your uh, wage percentages of, of how that you can how that you can manage that, and then think about when you're um, when you're creating that wage and you're, or you're creating that salary. You know, incorporate try to incorporate that into it as well things like 20 percent off the off the job training um you know if they've got to go into college one day a week you know incorporate all of that in um because i think that's quite important um the i can't kate i can't give you a, an exact figure um I, unfortunately i just have confidence that you know yes having people that are with you for a long period of time likes of our darren's and bits and pieces if if it, it would have cost us a lot more absolutely you know would we have somebody who is as good as as, as him probably not because he understands the business and they've been with us for a long for a, a long period of time um you know retention you know it certainly helps with that so it does bring down your your um your recruitment costs long term um you have to quantify this as investment for for the long term you know definitely um, thanks. Hannah's asked a question which you, you've covered in part, but it would be useful to go into it specifically. You talked earlier about misconception that apprenticeships are equals cheap labour. What do you specifically do to tackle this misconception when you've got some parents, well-meaning parents, that probably don't understand um, that there's a good career in, in if you uh, are on an apprenticeship in the pub down the road? Give them my mobile number. <laughs> no, yeah I, I think that is one of the biggest challenges is, is getting over the hurdles and the barriers right from the off because you know it's not the majority of the time it's not the young people you know i think it's the advice and the guidance that comes around the other side you know if you end up looking at a tr looking at a trade show you've probably got the parents around the arms guiding them away from a stand that says hospitality or a hotel or or pub you know where um invite them in that's the yeah. key. Invite them in, talk to them, sit down, have some really honest conversations. Um, you know, you've got to make sure that that it's the right decision for you. You've got to make sure that it's the right decision for, for them. Yeah. You know, that's that's key. Um, you know, if you think that you can give that person added value, go for it. If you think that they can give you added value, go for it. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. Um, Molly's asked a question and, and I, I should know the answer to this. You may do, but we will basically we will certainly find out if we don't know it between us. If you uh, use a Kickstart program, uh, take on a Kickstarter, and you've got the incentive from the government, can you still get the government's incentive uh, for um, them joining an apprenticeship program? I I'm not sure on that. I I not doubt sure. it. I doubt it. Because they yeah. were classified as as we'll we'll follow that up and find that question out. But we you know we we have got uh, we've got something at the okay. moment. So we are currently uh, to what we're in now. We're, we're in April. We are currently recruiting for our apprentices, but the apprenticeship scheme doesn't start until September. Okay, I can I we can answer that. Okay. Scott Forbes, my director of communications, um, knows the answer to that question. The answer is yes. Um, so the Kickstarter scheme essentially enables you to have your wages covered. Uh, it can only be used for people up to the age of 24. 
Uh, so the government will commit to paying 100% of the national minimum wage or the national living wage for the first six months. And um, whilst those individuals are on that scheme, um, you can also put them in for further training grants. So you can also get, um, if you decide to put them onto an apprenticeship, then you will also be able to attract the apprenticeship funding. As part of the Kickstarter scheme as well, the government pays the national insurance uh, contributions for those individuals um, and other benefits. So it's actually quite a worthwhile scheme to take part in and participate in. Brilliant, yeah. thank you. And one, one bit of advice on that, if, if anybody is looking to try to um, go into the Kickstart scheme, get in contact with your um, your local D DWP um, centre or job centre and talk to them about your roles and try to talk to the coaches about your, the roles you've got available and, and your business. I think it definitely helps. Brilliant, thank you. Um, we've been going for quite a while and, and that's been really helpful. Final question for the, in this section, Mark, and, and we'll open it up after I've just given some input to the slides in a moment or two. Final question from Justin. Um, what's your main piece of advice to any publican who is still a little reluct reluctant to take on an apprentice? Speak to your, um, find a provider that you're confident with okay um and chat to them about the process and what it, um, um, and what it will mean um then there is absolutely no there's you, just go and recruit just put there is no arm putting an advert out there you don't have to commit to anything and just see if you can find somebody that could be brilliant and i think that's that's the key you know you don't rush you, you you don't have to rush into these things. You don't have to commit to anything, but it's all about trying to find somebody who you can build that relationship with. And I think if you get that right, then you'll love it and you'll do it again and, you know, and again and again and again. And, you know, get involved in your, in your own recruitment. Okay. So, you know, some providers will um, create a job advert for you and put it out on um, get my first job, or you can go and find somebody um, yourself or look internal as well. Um, I think you'd be quite surprised at uh, the amount of ambition that might be in there um, that of your own team members that might want to develop and might want to um, do something long term because, you know, apprenticeship can benefit them. But important to have that open conversation of if you went and you did an apprenticeship it probably it, it wouldn't affect your wage because that's a lot of what you know a lot of what we face you know initially you say oh i want to go on a you know like a level three or level four duty manager or something like that looking looking for growth or looking to develop the initial thing was no well i don't want to pay cut well that's you don't have to and and it it really i think that's one side that we that the apprenticeship scheme frustrates me more than anything else is the way that it's just perceived as just being reduction in wage or reduction in, in or cheap labor, like really gets on my, yeah, anyway. <laughs> and that's, that's brilliant, no, thank no. you. No, that's absolutely fine. Thank you very much indeed. Um, I, I also take away from this that, that the success of an apprenticeship program is, is as successful as you make it as the uh, publican that actually your your passion for it and your engagement in it is is provides you with dividends back as a as an organization yeah and, and i think it's 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 great it's particularly if you can find somebody inside of your local community as well because you you know the love and support that you get from like the families and um you know and, and the external you know whenever i've got um an apprenticeship um, opportunity that I'm even thinking about. Uh, I've got like a little local community magazines that that go round that drop in, uh, in people's doorsteps. I put an advert in that. Right. You know, I'm trying to pull in from that local community of you know people that are around. You know anybody looking for not quite sure what they're going to do. Now's a really great time to start thinking about that because you've got you know all of the secondary school kids that are you know back into school. The pressure's going to be on. What 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 are you doing? What are you doing at college? I've got one lad um, who has been doing it uh, one day a week with us, you know, again, similar to what Darren did, We've got him in from work experience, spent the day and he's like, do you want a job? Well, yeah, great. You know, so he's doing one day a week in, in school. He's, he's about to go into um, to start a catering apprenticeship. And I was like, well, why, 
he was going to do it full time in the college. And I was like, well, why don't you just do it with us? You know, spend one day a week, earn lots, and then so we'll start that process all over again. Of you know, let's have let's sit down, let's have a meeting with your career advisor, let's have a meeting with your parents, let's see what you can let's let allow me to demonstrate the advantages of doing an apprenticeship in house. Brilliant. Okay. Thank Mark. Thank you very much indeed. That's been really really helpful and really insightful to have you use apprenticeships. We'll stay stay around because the, I'm sure there'll be some further Q and A from people at the end of this session. So thank you for, for now, for your uh, input this morning. I really, really appreciate that. And I think everybody will agree that's been a, a really great insight to how apprenticeships can work. Uh, I've just got a few slides I wanna share. So I'm just gonna share my, my screen. Um, and um, now I've just gotta work it out. There we go. So just an overview of apprenticeship funding uh, and you'll get these slides along with a link to the recording after this, this meeting. Uh, employers are entitled to help uh, from government either to pay for apprenticeship training or assessment or as an incentive payment for other costs. The amount provided depends on whether you're, uh, you pay the apprenticeship levy. Um, apprenticeship levy, you may well have heard a lot about. That's if you've got a payroll that is more than three million pounds a year uh, not many of us have that uh, but there will be some that do so you will uh, if you're in that category you will um, you will uh, have access to some direct funds if you don't pay the levy uh, there's a five percent towards the cost of training and uh, assessing your apprentice um, then uh, the incentives the uh, apprentice the incentive the incentives are available currently there are various government initiatives these are the ones for in England specifically, if you're in one of the devolved nations, there are other specific um, incentives. For any new apprentice, regardless of age that you recruit, um, to the 30th of September 2021, there's a, an incentive. You will be able to apply for incentive payments for these apprentices between the 1st of June and the 30th of November. Um, there are additional payments for apprentices aged 16 to 18 and those under 25 with an EHCP plan. That's a, um, uh, an educational support plan. For new apprentices that join your organization between the 1st of August 2020 and 31st of March, you're entitled to the following. That's obviously if the, um, the, uh, the dates have just gone, but you, you may well be able to uh, claim those grants up to the 31st of May. Um, government is also providing uh, for incentives for employer, employee apprentices that have been made redundant. The incentive is the same as recruiting a new apprentice. There are plenty of apprentices out there in different sectors. My own son was made redundant from the um, outdoor education, um, outdoor pursuits uh, centre. Um, and there are lots of those industries that still haven't been able to open up and hospitality may well be an attractive proposition for, for people to move into. So apprentices that haven't yet completed, even in different sectors, can be recruited. You may find that others have been displaced from different parts of the country and have gone home, uh, were on apprenticeship, but are staying at home. So uh, they may have moved from one part of the country to another. Again, they could be picked up. Um, and as Mark said, the uh, kickstart program um, is uh, for 16 to 24 year olds on universal credit or who are at risk of long-term unemployment um, information there which Scott talked about and then support from the BIIAB and our centres. Um, BIIAB qualifications and input assessments provide great solutions for workforce development they always have they're focused on doing that so particularly some of our shorter programs uh, products can be tailored to meet individual needs uh, from level th two through to level four and indeed level one as well. Our hospitality related qualifications are all endorsed by the BII um, and uh, we pride ourselves on developing qualifications in BIIAB to meet the needs of the sector. Um, we pride ourselves on our customer service. As part of this session, if you are interested in apprenticeships um, I would encourage you to uh, use the email address on screen which is relationship management at skills that's our generic email address for all of our relationship managers 
they all of our relationship managers are uh, cover the country geographically um, and they will broker a contact between you and approved centre in your area, one of our approved centres that deliver our qualifications and our input assessments. Um, Mark, Mark alluded to it being important that you get the relationship right with your provider and I would echo that. So if our relationship manager puts you in touch with a, a centre in your geographical area um, and I um, and it doesn't quite gel with you, then come back to them would be my advice. Come back to our relationship managers and they will put you in touch with somebody else. Our centres can then help and advise you on qualifications, uh, BIIAB qualifications and apprenticeships and some of the financial incentives uh, that government are, um, are, have got out at the moment and they will help you and support you uh, in the best way they can. Again, if you're not quite getting what you need from a centre, your local provider centre, please be in contact with our relationship managers um, and they will put you in, in touch with somebody else that can help you. Um, thank you for listening. Uh, we've got a few minutes left. Have you got, if there, anybody's got any questions, uh, we'd be happy to take those now. And I know Steve will also wrap up the session too. Um, has anybody got any questions? Uh, we've answered quite a few as we've gone through uh, eloquently from Mark. I've got a question. Hello. Um, Hi, this is from Mark, really. Hello. Um, have you been able to get into secondary schools to encourage them to send students to you for work experience? Yes. Yeah. Really, really good route to go down. Um, I would be an open open door for, for uh, young people coming into sample um, to sample hospitality for work experience. So I think we we have every single year um, we have at least probably two or three uh, work experience people. Um, and, you know, a, a, the majority of them end up picking up part time job off of the back of it. And then we engage in the conversations afterwards around their long term career goals and, and um, apprenticeship routes as opposed to um, go to college. So, yeah, really good avenue um, to pick stuff out there. Have you had any assistance from the local authority to be in contact with local schools or is this all things that you've had to do yourself? Um, I think if you if you if you get in contact with your um, local schools and just give them a heads up that you you're open to having work experience people um, that hasn't been done direct. Uh, I don't di get directly in contact with our like local authority. So it's all direct directly with the schools and also the um, providers. Um, so, you know, things like your colleges and bits and pieces that, that um, promote apprenticeships, they have some really good contacts in that. And usually they do like career days and open days for apprenticeships. So we usually get involved with them. Um, we've been speakers at a few of those, whereas you'd have um, secondary school children that would go along to an open day with the parents and we just chat to them and, and, and answer any of the questions that they've got. So, you know, have a have a look for those kind of days and get involved in them as well. Really good route. And, and it could well be, Patricia, that, that the training provider that you're working with, um, I, I know there's one or two on the call today, training providers that you work with may well have had applicants uh, apply directly. So it might well, it's very well worth having a conversation with um, your um your, provide, your provider about actually your recruitment needs and they may well be able to help you with that a little bit too. The other thing being is quite often you'll find that you'll have young people that start work at 15, 16 with a part-time job with, with aims of going somewhere else. Uh, they may have you know, been earning some pin money while they're doing their A-levels and they might have an in, uh, a view of going to university. Well, this is, I think, a great opportunity for... Uh, the use of the apprenticeship scheme to uh, retain those people working in the business. So really encourage you to look at that too. Um, Andy, well, I, think, uh, I, think, I think for me, but I just pick, pick up, apprenticeships aren't just for young people. Yes, absolutely. That's, that's the key. I think it's really, really important. It doesn't matter how old you are, there's an opportunity of an apprenticeship out there, out, out there for somebody. Entry, entry level recruitment for apprenticeships brilliant but you know think think about that for you know development and also the the older you know, if you're looking for you know that management level or something like that having having an opportunity of a level three or a level four um leadership 
uh, qualification. At least then you you pretty much know that you're going to have a, a good retention for that 12, 12 18 months. Um, we are we're feeding into we're having some input with our um, college at this moment in time of of um, having uh, having a lot of input into the criteria for the new level four. So things that we do inside of the business, like the way that we cost things, the way that we do doing GPs with our kitchen staff, the way that we look at all of our um, p &Ls, um, the way that we do some of our social media, you know, all of that we're feeding back in of which is helping to create some of the criteria for these courses. So. Brilliant, thank you. Um, Andy, you've got a question. Uh, there is just about time. So uh, for the last question, I'm going to hand over to Andy. Uh, I'll be as quick as I can then. Uh, I'm in a different situation to most. Uh, I operate um, at a student's union on a university campus. So we trade for nine months of the year. Um, and my question is probably that most people won't have that common experience, but would that be a barrier to the apprenticeship scheme? Now, we, we work uh, as much as anybody else. You know, we work a full week for 52 weeks of the year even during the you know, Christmas close down periods and summer close down periods, but we actually stop trading. So would the fact that we're not trading 12 months of the year be any sort of barrier to an apprenticeship scheme? I don't even know if anyone can, knows the answer to that. Andy, can you, it might be worth looking whether you can do a job share. Um, so the apprenticeship scheme could follow on. So spend nine months with, with, with yourself and then maybe, you know, then carry on with somebody and then with the opportunity to, to then come back to you. Um, right, that's a good idea, thank you. Neil uh, Farker, who's our lead EQA, have you got an answer to that question? I think it would be worth looking at your local providers because they might be able to arrange additional times for you and additional work to work through it. Uh, I don't know the 100% correct answer to that. It's something we could find out and come back to you. But I think if you spoke to your local providers, your colleges or training companies they might be able to look at trying helping you out to work around the times that you've got available and it might be about how you factor the off the job training element as well and uh working that through so i'm sure that there, there is an answer to the question andy um and we can uh, pick that up and happy to put you in touch with some providers for our relationship management team all right i appreciate that thank you brilliant thank you um we're, our time is nearly gone. Firstly, can I thank uh, Mark? Um, thank you, Mark, for sharing and being such an ambassador for the apprenticeship programme. It has uh, been fascinating listening to you and, and quite inspiring, actually, to see how you have made the apprenticeship programme a real success for your business. Oh, thank you. Can I can I just take this opportunity to say thank you to, to you lot, you know, the, the support that the BII and BIAB have, have given us a lot over the last like 18 months has been absolutely incredible. You know, you've worked your backsides off for, for, for us all. And, and I just want to say, you know, well done and thank you. Brilliant. Thank you, Mark. And then on that, I'm going to hand over to Steve to close our session, who rightly took deserves to take the uh, credit for leading the BII over the last uh, 18 months or so. Well, thank you, Paul. And, and thank you, Mark, on, on two points. So, you know, the, the, the team uh, keep pushing to, to do everything we can to, to help all of our members through all these stages. So to, to have that kind of feedback goes a long way for all of them that have done everything they can and passionately believe in this sector. Um, because it's led by entrepreneurs. And that's what, you know, we were always talking to government about. This is not big business. These, these are you know, great operators like yourself uh, that just get hospitality. Um, so it's just been fantastic. You know, your passion is there. Mark, so, you know, huge testament to yourself. And I think you've made it very practical and accessible, which sometimes this, this topic area gets quite technical and people therefore tune out and don't understand its relevance to their, to their business. And that's why we were keen today to provide a very simple, quick platform on actually for all pubs, shapes and sizes and Andy, you made a great, you know, a great point about your very different operating models. It's relevant for all, and you get that that retention that you talked about because it's, it is a big issue in the industry. You know, we've not talked about the EU, but a lot of our members used EU workers pr uh, prior to the pandemic and, and now can't get them back because they don't meet the new rules. Um, so that you know, this is about you're absolutely right. Getting on the front foot, sharing, you know, with with government and all stakeholders. What an exciting entrepreneurial space this is now you can come in at entry level 
and run great venues. And we've got so many examples across our, our you know, our growing membership that, that illustrate that. So look, it, it was a start today. Uh, there's some great information, Paul, that you've shared and some contact points to, to make this as simple as possible. As always, what the BII team is here to help in any way we can. So if there's any queries whatsoever, just drop us an email, drop us a call. We'll do absolutely everything we can to, to move this forward. But I think you, you said that at the start, well, this, this is the start of it. We've got a, a long road ahead, hopefully an exciting one as well. Uh, let's get those doors open fully on the 21st and then help you with all these elements, including having the right teams in place. So thank you everybody for taking your time today. Appreciate you guys are really busy. For those of you who are already open, uh, all the very best. Hope this weather continues and it gets a little bit warmer in those beer gardens at night because it's a uh, it's a real challenge. We we get that. And for those that haven't opened yet, again, good luck in the in the next few weeks. But thank you for your time, and uh, I'll uh, close it out at that point. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Bonnie. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>